Um, so I'm Jason. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to talk. I'm going to be talking about Dynasim, uh, which is a tool I created for uh, neural modeling in MATLAB. Uh, so my original purpose for creating this tool was to make it as easy as possible to build and explore uh, networks of neurons with one or a few compartments. And it's kind of grown from there. Uh, so first I'm going to talk about how models are specified in Dynasim and go into some of the technical details of that. Then I'm briefly going to touch on some other features of Dynasim. And then um, I'm going to uh, talk about some new developments that are exciting and um, I think will be especially interesting to people here. Um, so uh, in Dynasim, uh, functions operate on a few uh, structures. Uh, there's one for stand um, specifying the model, uh, one for the aggregated model equations, and then one for the simulated data. And uh, the user can specify the model in uh, multiple ways, uh, but it always gets converted into a standardized specification. And so the standardized specification uh, divides the model into populations, connections, and mechanisms. And so mechanisms are things like intracellular signaling, or ion channels, or synapses, and they um, affect the intrinsic neuronal dynamics of cells in a population, and they can also be used to connect populations. And then all of the information in that specification gets put into a single set of equations in the model structure, and then those equations are integrated to produce the simulated data. Uh, so the uh, user can specify models uh, using equations or higher level model objects um, in strings or in dynasm structures. And I'll explain what that means as I go. Um, so this slide is just showing two examples of models. Uh, one, which is just an arbitrary set of differential equations uh, listed in mathematical notation. Um, you pass that to a dynasm function called DS simulate, and then it uh, integrates the model. Uh, now, Dynasim was created to do a lot more than that. And so the next example shows a Hodgkin-Huxley type neuron with three ion channels, um, the sodium, fast potassium, and slow potassium current. And um, this is kind of a, a much more efficient way of uh, specifying a model like that. So I'm going to go into more detail how that works. Um, so yeah, now we're going to dive a little deeper into this. And so. This is just showing uh, the equations for a single Hodgkin-Huxley neuron. And we can see the voltage dynamics are controlled mainly by two ion currents. And then all of these equations here have been grouped according to uh, those which define those ion currents. And so it's often the case that we have multiple populations and we want the same ion currents to be in them. So it's useful if this, this can be made modular. So we can imagine copying those equations into text files. And then we want to somehow uh, connect those equations with um, um, the voltage dynamics in, a, say, a set of populations. Uh, we would need some way to link the equations in those text files to the equations outside the text files, uh, defining the voltage dynamics. And so um, there's this concept of linkers that accomplishes that. And so if you look at the um, sodium uh, kind of file here, um, what this says is wherever at current appears outside of the file in some other equation, um, replace it additively with uh, the sodium current defined inside the file. And um, so that at current could be replaced with any identifier that appears somewhere else in the model. And the current could be replaced with anything else that's defined within the file. And you can have multiple linkers. <clears throat> so in Dynasim, a modular collection of equations and linkers is called a mechanism. And um, mechanisms are very... Um, it's a very simple idea, but it's also uh, quite powerful. And so they can be used to define the intrinsic dynamics of cells or to connect uh, cells, um, or even to link different spatial scales. Um, so here's an example that shows the same Hodgkin-Huxley neuron now defined using uh, these sodium and potassium mechanisms. So you can see on the right, uh, the two mechanisms are just listed, and then you see that linker at current in the uh, equation for the voltage dynamics. And so this just says replace that at current with INA plus IK, and you end up with the full set of equations. And um, you can then go uh, one more step and then group all of those equations into its own file for a predefined population. And then these predefined populations can be used to very efficiently specify a model that includes multiple populations. 
And so uh, these model objects, which are mechanisms and populations, are modular and reusable and make it very easy to uh, build up uh, larger models uh, from these predefined objects. And, um, yeah, and this um, seems to be especially useful for experimentalists who don't have any background in the mathematics and want to play with switching out different populations, adding ion channels, um, adding new intracellular dynamics. Um, so next I'm going to show how these mechanisms can be used to link uh, populations into larger systems. So here we have a model with two populations um, connected by AMPA and GABA-A synapses. And we can define each population using a neuron model similar to the one on the previous slide. And we've just added some Gaussian noise uh, to that model. And um, as I mentioned before, the specification structure divides the model into populations, connections, and mechanisms. So we can use that structure to define the two populations, uh, give them names, set the sizes of the populations, and define their dynamics. And then we can use these predefined uh, connection mechanisms for synapse and GABA-A, I mean for AMPA and GABA-A, um, to connect uh, the two populations. And so this same approach can be extended to connecting multiple compartments into a multi-compartment cell. Um, and it can also be used to connect uh, populations that are actually models at different scales. So you could imagine having um, a spiking network and a neural mass model of a larger system and you can link them using a connection mechanism that, say, sums all the voltages or the currents um, over the spiking network and then feeds that into the neural mass model. Um, so in principle, this approach can be used to uh, specify any neural system that can be described by differential equations. Um, so next I'm just going to briefly talk about some features of DynaSim and then shift to something that I think is a little more interesting. Um, so another goal of DynaSim was to make it very easy to explore uh, regions of parameters, parameter space. Yeah. Um, so to do this, I created an um, efficient specification of the parameter space and then um, made it so that DynaSim automates the process of running simulations in parallel and then also created functions that make it easy to work with um, all of the data that gets produced. So here's just uh, one example that shows um, the parameter space where we have three different uh, strengths of drive to the E population, three different time constants for the feedback inhibition. Um, the Cartesian product of that gives uh, nine sets of parameters. And then you just pass that to this DS simulate function, and it will run all nine simulations. Um, and then there are these functions for plotting all of the results um, very quickly. So you can get raster plots, power plots, uh, look at time frequency plots. Uh, this on the right is showing the mean firing rate as a function of the two parameters. And um, there are many more things uh, that you can do like that in DynaSim. <clears throat> so in terms of performance, um, DynaSim in MATLAB is kind of comparable to Brian2 in Python. And uh, the benchmark here is just showing a Hodgkin-Huxley network uh, changing the number of cells. Um, in addition to running like, uh, the code um, um, in an interpreted mode, you can actually tell DynaSim to compile it into a MEX file. And uh, that can give you a speed up of about 10 to 100x. Um, then when you're running sets of simulations, um, DynaSim automates the process of um, running them in parallel on different cores of a computer or creating jobs and distributing them to a cluster so they can run in parallel on different nodes. And then there are functions for loading all of that data and analyzing it. Um, and DynaSim is also available on the Neuroscience Gateway um, uh, with these features. Um, and it also has a, a graphical interface um, that is a useful teaching tool, um, I find. And you can use it for building the models, exploring the models. Um, I'm not going to say much about it right now, um, but I'm doing a demo later. And if you're interested, I, I can show it to you there. All right. So now, uh, visions of the future. <laughs> um, so we've been talking about kind of building up these models uh, from cells, populations, networks. And um, now we're going to kind of shift our focus and think about how higher level data can be used to constrain these models. And so we can imagine if we have a bunch of circuits and we connect them into larger systems, we can then compare that to neuroimaging data. 
And so there's a framework in MATLAB already for doing that um, in the um, SPM toolbox. Um, but the uh, limitation of it is it, it only works with neural mass models. Um, so you can't uh, include any lower level biological details. Um, so what we want to do is take neuroimaging data like this and then constrain a model that has these type of details in it. And so the uh, kind of framework for doing this in MATLAB that exists already uh, is using this SPM toolbox, uh, which does neuroimaging data analysis. And so you get what are called statistical parametric maps that show the um, activity mapped onto the brain. And then using that toolbox, you can extract features from that. And so here it's showing an event-related potential for two different conditions. Um, of a task. And um, you can also extract uh, spectral proper properties and um, um, a wide range of features. So this uh, DCM component of the SPM toolbox um, specifies a model and uses Bayesian inference to fit that model to the extracted features. And so as it exists now, it only works with these uh, a graph of neural mass models. and um, so it, it essentially um, uses Bayesian inference to um, adjust the connectivity weights between the nodes in this, um, in this model and then figures out um, what type of changes can map the ERP, let's say, from one condition to another condition. Um, and this works with EEG, MEG, fMRI, ECOG, and a, a wide range of features. Um, but it has this limitation of only working with neural mass models. So it's successfully linked systems level modeling with systems and cognitive neuroscience, but it's lacking a lot of the lower level biological details that neuroscientists often care about. Um, so the idea here is to replace DCM with DynaSim for the neural uh, model specification and simulation. And by doing that, we can then bring in any of the models that can be implemented in DynaSim. And so it could be a model of, of uh, a multi-compartment uh, neurons connected into circuits linked to different um, regions and cortex. And uh, you take those dynamics, um, define some observation model that maps them onto the features extracted from the neuroimaging data. And then the Bayesian inference um, will try to fit some set of parameters uh, to those features. Um, and so the kind of proof of concept for this is almost complete. So the next thing after that is to kind of make it um, more usable. Um, but I think this is a, an exciting direction for linking uh, cognitive neuroscience with uh, lower level biology. And you could do things like looking at the impact of, say, drugs on uh, neural system dynamics associated with uh, changes in cognitive performance. And so uh, kind of the... Um, bigger picture here is for this to really be powerful, we need to um, um, use um, a larger neuroinformatics infrastructure. And so to do this optimization with uh, these detailed uh, models, we could link to something like the Neuroscience Gateway and then distribute the simulations there, have them run on their machines, get back the results, then do the optimization on that in an iterative process. And since DynaSim is able to uh, specify any neural model, we could then take these more complicated models from databases like um, the Open Source Brain or the Allen Institute or the Human Brain Project, feed those in, and then do the optimization on those models. And then finally, we could um, uh, take the optimized models and then give them back to the community by exporting them to, say, Open Source Brain or um, some other repository. Uh, using NeuroML, let's say. Um, and then, yeah, there are other things we could do. We could optimize the models using different types of experimental data um, or use different optimization methods. Um, and yeah, so some interesting directions. Um, that's it. If you have any questions, happy to take them. i um, doing a demo later. And uh, thank you for listening. Any questions for Jason? Hi. Okay. Uh, great talk.
Lovely work. I had a question related to the last things you were talking about just now with the integration with DCM. Mm -hmm. And um, with, in my experience, I mean, the, the vari variational Bayesian inversion routines that they have there for the, for the neural mass models, they're really um, tailored towards models where they have an, uh, an analytically defined gradient. So that's almost never, well, that's never going to be the case with the models you're talking about. It's almost never the case with neural mass models in general, even though they're, they're relatively simple. And in my experience, when you're working, when using the, those tools like the SPM NLSI, the nonlinear system identification optimization routine, it's incredibly slow when you just give it a black box model and don't, don't give it the analytic definition for the Jacobian. So is it, but you, it sounds like you've got pretty far with this, with a, something that I would have thought just from, from what I know pretty hard. So is that something that you've encountered and does this sound familiar? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so, so far it's kind of tractable using just a few nodes, uh, each with populations that have tens to maybe a hundred cells. Um, and that can take a very long time to do the optimization uh, without an anal analytical solution. Um, for instance, it could take days, um, which is why it's important to kind of, um, I think, incorporate these clusters uh, for doing this. Um, maybe instead of being days, we could get it down to a few hours. Um, but yeah, th that's um, uh, a big challenge. Uh, I think it's possible. Um, how many neurons we need for this to be uh, useful is an open question. Um, if, if it needs more, we could simplify the neuron models, use something like Azikovich neurons. Um, but there's going to be a trade-off you know, for a long time between the complexity of the model that we can optimize and the infrastructure that we're using. Um, hopefully, eventually, it'll be powerful enough. Any more questions? Um, have, have you thought about the... Um, um, mid so, I mean, there have been a lot of um, simulators that have been developed over the years, and, and the majority of them aren't usable anymore because the people who developed them have left science or have moved on to other things. Um, so, so, I mean, how sustainable is, is Dynasim? Excellent question. <laughs> um, so, so far I've done this um, without funding, and um, so I'm going to be applying for some grants to get funding. Um, if I'm able to get funding, then it'll be developed uh, for sure for at least a few more years. And um, there are other people working on it um, uh, that I've been trying to recruit uh, to kind of take over the develop development, uh, moving it forward in other directions. Um, but still, without funding, you know, you could run into the same problem of it dying off. Um, so it really comes down to, to that. Um, I'll be using this at least for um, the next two or three years, even without funding uh, and developing it. And if it catches on, um, then I'll keep developing it. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the key is to, is to push its unique properties. So, so I guess, you know, why would someone choose to use uh, Danny Sim compared to, say, Brian 2? Mm -hmm. I guess one reason is if you want to do this with other MATLAB tools like uh, like SPM, then, then that's a very good reason. So I think if you push the unique selling points, that, that, that you need to get more users to make it sustainable in yeah. the long term. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Just while the next speaker is setting up, I think we need to have one more question from Craig. Uh, yeah, but, just a quick um, question. Uh, have you started?